The PROC file system is a virtual file system that contains information about the running Linux kernel. We can read information about the various running processes, our current CPU stats, memory usage, our disk partitions, and other important system information. We can make changes to some of the data within the PROC file system, which will modify how the kernel behaves while the system is running. However, since the PROC file system is created when the system boots, the changes we make will not survive a reboot. Shortly, we will see how to make these changes permanent. The PROC file system is where commands such as LSUSB and LSPCI get their information from. A lot of the information in the PROC file system is easy for us to read, but other locations contain information that is difficult for an administrator to understand. That's where the assistance of commands such as PS, LSPCI, TOP, and others come into play. Let's take a look at the PROC file system. As you can see, there is quite a good deal of information in this directory. We can see a file in here called CPU info. Let's have a look at that file. And here we can see some information about our processor. We also have a file called meminfo. Let's view this file. And here we can see some very detailed information about the memory usage on our system. An example of a command that uses the information from this file is the free command. As you can see, it is a bit easier getting the main details from the free command than it is to parse through the long output of the meminfo files. Take a look at the proc mounts file and compare that to the output of the mount command. Again, the proc file system contains more details, but the mount command makes it easier to read the information we need. We can also change the way the kernel behaves while the system is running by modifying some entries in the PROC file system. For instance, we can set our kernel up to route packets through it, which is a necessary step for setting up a Linux system to act as a network router by changing a parameter in the PROC file system. If we take a look at the IP forward kernel parameter within the PROC file system, we can see that the parameter is set to zero, meaning that this feature in the kernel is turned off. We can change this while the system is still running by modifying that parameter. Now, our system is set up to allow packets to be forwarded through it. However, the PROC file system is created at boot time, and we only changed a kernel parameter while the kernel was running. So the next time we reboot, this parameter will be turned off again. The etsy syscontrol.conf file lets us make modifications to some of the same kernel parameters that are in the PROC file system, and these changes will be persistent across reboots. Let's take a look at this file. And if you look at the first option in this file, we can see that it is the setting for allowing packet forwarding. If we change this setting to 1, then when we reboot the system, the IP forward value in the PROC file system will be enabled. Should you need to modify other kernel parameters, you could use the sysctl command. To see a complete listing of kernel parameters that you can change, run the sysctl command with the dash "-a", a option. There are a lot of options, so pipe the output to the less command. If you make any changes to any of these values, make sure to add a line for that option and its value to the etsy sysctl.conf file to make it permanent. Take a look at the man page for the sysctl.conf file and the sysctl command to find out more details about this command and its associated file.